Hello again, pre-calculus students. In our last video, we learned how to graph lines and circles using um, polar coordinates and polar graphing. Now we're going to learn how to graph what's called a rose, and they're, they're pretty cool. I think you'll agree. Let's get started. <clears throat> so a rose um, can be graphed in polar coordinates with one of these two equations either r equals some constant times the sine of another constant times theta or a cosine. So this means we're going to take theta, multiply it by n, take the sine of it, and then multiply it by some constant a. Same here for cosine. Now I've already created a number of graphs in Desmos uh, showing this. Let's take a look at those graphs and see what we can divine about roses. And they're in here somewhere. Okay, I think we have to go here and then here. All righty, here we go. <clears throat> so my first graph is r equals three times the cosine of two theta. So three is my a, two is my n. And you notice this graph goes from zero to 360 degrees. And there's my rose, it has four petals. You'll notice that the three goes up one, two, three. So the petal is three units long. And I want you to pay attention to this. N is two and the graph has four petals. Okay, let's watch what happens with sine. All right, it's still a four petal graph, but, and let's see, and each um, petal is one, two, three units long, but it's been rotated for some reason. Also note that when N is two, we're going from zero to 360 degrees. Now we're going to do two cosine of three theta. Notice that the, um, let's actually go back to the cosine of two theta. Notice that cosine, um, it's got a leaf centered there on the X axis. And the reason for that is where is cosine a maximum? At what theta? It's at theta equals zero. So two times zero is zero, the cosine is one, r is three times one or three. So cosine is gonna be centered here on that x-axis. Same here, <clears throat> this time centered on the x-axis, n is three, but it only has three petals, but notice it only goes zero to 180 degrees. And um, we'll talk about what that means in a bit. Now, um, r equals sine uh, or two sine three theta. You'll notice this one, um, the petal is centered not at zero, but at 30 degrees. And why do you think that is? And the answer is three times 30 is 90, and 90 degrees is where sine reaches a maximum. The fact that this uh, petal is on the y-axis is coincidental, really. What's important is that the petal is not centered at zero, it's centered at 30 degrees, and there are three petals. So they'll be centered 120 degrees apart. <coughs> Next graph. This time we're gonna go to four theta. And notice again, with four theta, it goes zero to 360 degrees and we have eight petals. Now, when we go to sine, I'll just tell you now, as you see at zero to 360, there will be eight petals again. Where will one petal be centered? Won't be at zero, where will it be? Well, four times what gives us 90? Because 90 degrees is where sine is a maximum. 
that's going to be 22 and a half degrees. So you can see here's the 30 degree line and here we are at 22 and a half degrees. Still eight petals. So each petal is 45 degrees apart. Now we're going to go to um, n equals 5. And you'll see again, that's at 180 degrees. So you'll notice that when n was 2 and then n was 4, we went 0 to 360. When n is um, 3 and n is 5, we go to 180. That means something. So here we have five petals. And because it's cosine, we still have one centered on the zero line. I'm going three units out. And then um, 90 divided by five will be where the second one is, uh, the second graph. That first petal is um, centered. So what's going to happen here? <clears throat> is that, yeah, instead of telling you, I'll ask you for a moment. <clears throat> so what is A telling us? A is telling us the maximum distance from the pole. And what is N telling us? Well, when N was odd, there were n petals. When we had sine or cosine of three theta, we had three petals. When we had sine or cosine of five theta, we had five petals. When n is even, we had two n petals. So when n was two, we had four petals. When n was four, we had eight petals. And remember that business about going zero to 360 or zero to 180? Um, the odd ones went zero to 180. Because if you went 0 to 360, you would have two n petals. It's just that n of them, so let's say n is 3. You would have six petals, but three of them would be just on top of the other three. They would just copy over it. So we don't consider those separate petals. <coughs> so this is exceedingly important to know for graphing a rose. So where does the tip of a petal occur? Um, the tip, which is the furthest point from the pole, that occurs wherever um, sine of n theta or cosine of n theta is equal to one. Whatever n value or whatever theta value that is, that's where it's going to occur. And the petals will, there will either be n or two n petals, depending on if they are, if n is odd or even, and the petals will be evenly spaced. So if there are three petals, they'll be 120 degrees apart. If there are four petals, the centers of those petals will be 90 degrees apart. <clears throat> so let's graph a couple of these by hand. <clears throat> we don't need to be exceedingly exact. So here we have N is two, that's even, so they're gonna be four petals, it means they're gonna be 90 degrees apart. And they're going to be five units long. So here's my origin. I go one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to have a pedal there, pedal centered there, pedal centered there, and a pedal centered there. <coughs> Uh, let's see. Cosine of 60 degrees is one half. So two times 30 is 60. So at the 30 degree part, so it's um, two of these lines at 30 degree part, we're only going to be at two and a half because it's one, two and a half. Then we'll go um, 30 degrees down here and it'll just be two and a half. So my rose is going to look something like this. And then um, 
it would probably, if we were doing the graph, it would start here, go down like this. If I'm not, if I remember correctly, but um, let's see. So 30 degrees up. So th we need to go 30 degrees from this side will be half. And then here. Thirty degrees from here will be one, two and a half. Let's see one, two and a half. One, two and a half. And there we've graphed the rows r equals five cosine two theta. It's not perfect, but yeah, it'll do. <coughs> now let's look at the graph of r equals five sine of three theta. <coughs> In this case, n is odd. So it's only gonna have three petals. <coughs> and three times 30 is 90, so. Draw my axes here. So the, I'm going to have a leaf or a petal settled, centered at 30 degrees. So one, two, three, four, five. It's going to be centered here. And so that's at 30 degrees. They're going to be 120 degrees apart. So the next one's going to be at 150 degrees. One, two, three, four, five. And then 120, or I'm sorry, 150 plus 120 is 270. So that last petal would be down here. And this graph is going to look something like this. There we go. Now, if you want to be a little more precise about how thick these petals are, um, you know the fewer petals, the um, or the more petals, the thinner they're going to be. Um, if you want to be precise, you could do an input-output table and graph them. It's just not necessary if you know that uh, if you know the rows equation, which is r equals a times the sine or cosine of n theta. And you analyze um, that, and you can freehand in your graph. If you wanna be more precise and do the um, input output table, that's fine. So to analyze it, you gotta ask yourself, how many petals are there? If n is odd, there are n petals. There would be two n, except the last ones would just overwrite the previous ones. So we just say there are n petals, and if n is even, there are two n petals because they don't copy over each other. Where will those petals occur? Well, if it's a cosine curve, then there will always be a petal centered on that x-axis because theta equals zero will give you a maximum. So you'll have a petal centered there. If, <coughs> if it's a sine curve, then you will want to figure out n times theta equals 90, what's theta? And that's where your curve will be sent or your petal will be centered. And then the petals, how long are they? They will be a units long. So here's a fun problem I'd like you to think about. It doesn't matter to me if you use a sine or a cosine um, rose, either one. What would be the equation of a rose with six petals and each petal is five units long? If you're thinking that's a trick question, it is. If you haven't gotten that far yet, think about it a bit and determine why it's a trick question. I'll leave you with that. Have a great day.